Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to this series on Split EQ from Eventide. This is a really interesting plugin. It uses Eventide's structural split technology to split incoming audio into its transient and tonal components. In other words, the attack and the sustain portion of the sound, they're separated for up to eight bands of individual EQ and independent frequency-specific panning. So it's a really interesting non-traditional EQ plugin where you can EQ and pan the attack or transient portion of the signal separately from the tonal or the sustain portion. It can be used to enhance or repair or rebalance, and it works with both left and right and also mid-side panning. So you can really get some interesting imaging going on here. Now, under the hood, Split EQ operates as two EQs in parallel one for the transient signal and one for the tonal signal. They can be accessed separately for each band or linked together like a traditional EQ. So as you hover your mouse over the main EQ plot, you'll see that we have the six main uh, selectable bands. When I say selectable, they can be changed between shelf, peak, notch, tilt, band pass, and so on. So we see the six traditional bands, and there's a high pass and low pass filter at each end. So we can grab them and move them around, and they operate and sound like a regular EQ. Here's a percussive signal. So nothing unusual there, but I'm going to option click to bring it back. What we can do is grab the yellow part, and that will operate only on the transient portion and the blue part on the tonal portion. So we can really rebalance the signal like this. And then I can adjust the width, of course. So I'm getting only the transient, or mainly the transient portion, with just this broad adjustment. And I can do something opposite. I want to minimize the attack. We'll widen that. And I'm getting no attack. So just to give you a rough idea of what's possible, and again, an option click will bring that back and then that back. So there's lots of little interesting workflow shortcuts. Let's go over some of them. So you see that we can separate the band like that by grabbing the green and blue part. But what we can do is double click one to join with the other. So for example, if I double click on the tonal part here, the transient snap down to it, and I'll separate this. And if I double click on the transient part, the tonal will snap up to it. So interesting. We can option click as you saw to reset, and we can shift drag to adjust the cue as we're dragging. So as I hold down shift, you'll see that the width is getting adjusted. And we can command click for finer resolution, and that's control click on Windows. Now, a really nice feature is that we can get a kind of momentary solo per band and even per split signal by option command dragging, and that's control alt dragging as it's playing. So I can sweep around and hear just the transient, or here, and hear just the tonal part. Now we have the band editors as well. We can double click to type in a value, nothing too unusual or unexpected there. And we can option click to reset a value to its default amount. And we have these link icons here where we can drag both of those together. But a really interesting variation on this is that we can hold shift and it'll link in inverse directions. So here as I drag, I'm going in opposite directions. So everything together, or with shift. So I'm minimizing the attack there. Now we have controls at the bottom. We can reset all the frequencies to their default by clicking that. And we have a collapse and expand button just to minimize the view if you don't need access to all the controls if you're working in the graph. And then we have this where we can switch between EQ, which is what we've been working with so far, and panning. So here the mode becomes panning, and we can get the frequency-specific panning. Working on left-right, where I can pan the tonal and transient portions separately. And I can use these to move them together, the link button. And I can use Shift to 
can move in opposite directions here as well. So if I switch back here, I'll make some broad changes and then go back to panning. They can really change the kind of imaging of this. It's a little dramatic, but I think it makes the point. And I'll hold shift and go in inverse directions. Now we can click this to get into mid side mode. So for example, if I want to take the transient part, I can collapse that. So that's right in the center and expand the tonal part. I'll bypass the whole plugin here. It's really interesting the way it's modifying the sound. And this is without the EQ. So just the panning. Or I can collapse the tonal part and expand the attack. Which is interesting. Maybe not too traditional, but interesting. And I can option click and set them back to their defaults like that. Now we have the band controls here. We can turn each band on or off with these buttons. And then we can choose the type of slope we want here. And there's some, again, really interesting possibilities. Let me change this since we're in band two. We'll go to a tilt. And again, I can use shift and invert. And then take shift, my finger off shift and just move it. very dramatic interesting results and that's just one of the alternate bands we have band pass high pass notch peak and low shelf now we also can control the slope here and we can adjust it separately for the tonal and the transient portion or use that and adjust them together and it'll retain the offset as you see here now when we're in the pan controls we have access to some of the same common functions. For example, we can turn each band on or off and we can even change the filter shapes from here. And we have the solo button. Now let me just switch this back to peak and we can solo each band. And with the link here, we can move them together to collapse individual bands or we can grab one and move it separately from the other. So that's kind of the big picture to whet your appetite. There's a lot that this plugin can do. I'm going to end off here. In the next video, I want to look over the GUI, go over the main interface. Then we'll look at the transient splitting technology, and then we'll put it to work on several examples in the rest of the series. For now, let's just review some of the shortcuts we looked at that'll really help speed up your workflow. When you're working in the EQ plot, you can double click either the transient or the tonal band to join it with the other. Option or Alt on Windows, click to reset a band. Use Shift to adjust the width of a band right in the EQ plot. And you can Command, and that's Control on Windows, drag to get finer resolution. Option, Command, click, or Control, Alt, click while you're dragging, and you can get a momentary solo, which I really like. And when you're working in the band editors at the bottom, you double-click to enter a value. And again, you can Option or Alt, click to reset. And in my opinion, a really cool feature, you can use those link arrows to move together, but hold shift and they'll move in inverse directions, which is really interesting for exploring sound design possibilities. And also in the band editors, command and that's control on windows, drag for finer resolution. I'll see you for more in the next video.